Music is so important to me that I can spare two cups of coffee a month. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to today's vlog. A few changes knocking about. You might notice them if you're quite eagle-eyed. Did do a poll on Instagram and it was mostly women that said I should keep it clean shaven and most of the blokes who said, no, no, keep growing the beard. Anyway, beautiful morning out there today. But I want to talk about something really, really serious in today's vlog. And that is the news that 64% of musicians are considering quitting being a professional musician, and quitting the game, going out and doing something completely different. And I, I totally empathise with them. But... There are plenty of things you guys can do. You know, for example, three in five musicians have no gigs in the diary for the rest of 2020. I have two. You know, on average, I do about 70 gigs a year. I have two left. And if I add up the ones I've done earlier in the year, that means that this year I will probably do about 15 gigs, which is the lowest number of gigs I have done since I turned professional age 16 and a half. So I'm 40 next year. That's a hell of a long time. Uh, it's weird. It's really, really weird. And yet, you know, as a jazz musician, I don't really gig for the money. Long term is really, really quite serious because if we're losing that many musicians from our profession, that many performing musicians, what's going to happen to the next generation? Who's going to inspire them? Where are the performances that they're going to go to? And the audiences, never mind those that play instruments, the audiences that are going to support live music, not just jazz. Jazz is hard enough as it is. But where are those audiences going to find their inspiration? Where are they going to you know, where those young kids like I did, you know, several times in my life where I heard someone playing the saxophone and it was like, oh wow, that's really amazing. I want to be able to do that. You know, I always signpost a, a Courtney Pine gig when I heard him at 18. And it just blew my mind hearing someone, seeing someone playing with such energy, such verve that as a, you know, as a late teen kid, I was like, I really want to get back into my jazz. I really want to tap into this thing that he's doing. Now, the harsh reality is, you know, I don't believe the government really owes us anything. I don't think in a capitalist society in which we live, I am owed a living. I don't think any of us are owed a living. But if 64% of doctors were leaving the profession or lawyers, teachers, there'd be an outcry. There'd be a major, major government initiative. Look at 2008 and the banking crisis, what they did then. The UK economy benefits to the tune of £5.2 billion from the creative arts. And that's not including all the knock-on industries. You think about when you go out to a concert, you know, you get the train or you get a taxi, you go to a restaurant, you have a meal, you have drinks, you, you, you're going for something afterwards, you go out to, for another drink after the gig, you maybe even stay over in a hotel to go and watch that particular gig. There's lots and lots of knock-on effects that have gone. And if the music dies, if there are not musicians coming back to play, that will never come back. Now, I had a conversation with a friend, a musician the other week, we were having coffee, and I said to her, I said, I think it's going to be I think five years before things recover. I think a lot of venues are going to fail. I think a lot of musicians are going to have to go and do something else for a little while. And then I think slowly people will want to come back. But it's going to take time. And I think, I think five years minimum before we get back to it. Unless, unless we could do something to help people bridge over and tie that over, whether that's within the form of government support, but more importantly, within your support. Now, I don't think listening to gigs, live stream gigs, makes up for not being in, you know, in, in that room. I think there's something very special about being in the room where the music is being created. But there are things you can do, even just you on your own, collectively, the thousand and odd people who are gonna watch this, the 10,000 subscribers I have, over 10,000 subscribers we have on this channel that can make a difference to not just myself, but other musicians. The first thing is buy the music. Don't listen to it on Spotify. Don't listen to it on Apple Music. Don't stream it. Go and buy it. Bandcamp, CD Baby, those kind of things. Go to the musician's website. There are plenty of things off there. And before you think of the irony of, yes, that is me, and my website has Spotify at the top of it. It has that to try and get people to listen to the music, but really, if I'm going to survive, I need you to buy my music. I have 
200 CDs left of Jazz Vespers. I need to shift those before I think about recording a new album, which I'm not going to be putting on CD. I think. Go to Patreon. Support artists on Patreon. You can do it for, with mine for $2 a month. That's £1.40. Something like ridiculous like that per month. You know, there's lots and lots of artists. Think about £5 a month. Can you take five, ten dollars pounds, whatever, I know we're in different places. But can you go, I am going to use that to support music. Music is so important to me that I can spare two cups of coffee a month. Boom. I'm not going to Starbucks anymore anyway. So there you go. That's five pounds. Can you split that between four artists, two artists, one artist? Uh, you're going to make a difference to those musicians. And finally, other services. You know, like I say, there are people who are great teachers. Um, there are people who have done some really innovative things out there over this pandemic. Support them. Support things like Small's live stream. I know I've just said it's not the same. It isn't the same. But it's the closest you're going to get to being able to hear and support live jazz. I know Ronnie Scotts is doing a similar thing as well. So be inventive about how you support because the musicians are trying to be inventive about how they can stay in this industry. But when 64% are thinking of quitting, I find it hard enough to remember plastic bags, but it's a good idea for everyone to wear a mask. I'm trying to get a mask sorted and not steam up your glasses is always a major effort. If you're a plumber and you watch this vlog, then you have my utmost admiration. I'm not the greatest fan of DIY jobs at the best of times. When it comes to plumbing, oh, because not only is it difficult if you get it wrong, but if you get it wrong, you get covered in water. So I've been having fun trying to plumb this new dishwasher in. I think I've finally done it. The biggest problem there, the reason I had to go to the DIY store was because once I got everything in yesterday, the dishwasher wouldn't work because the washing machine was pinning the dishwasher inlet pipe and kinking it, so hopefully it's now all sorted. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Yes, the irony of playing the nearness of you in the middle of a global pandemic when we can't actually get close to each other. Seriously. But I just wanted to do a little bit of practice uh, at the end of the day. And I wanted to also do a very, very quick Q&A with you. I'm not going to put them across the screen today. Just going to go through what I've got on the uh, YouTube app. Uh, Stan Getz, obviously not these Stan Getz, but hi Stan Getz. Uh, can you show us around London sites sometime, like London Bridge and Ronnie Scott's? Well, Ronnie's is probably going to be closed soon. London Bridge. London is having its infections on the rise at the moment. So maybe not just yet, but I will be going back. Let me put this read away. Thomas Luke asked me how do I feel about the ABRSM performance grades. Um, it's a little bit late. I'm disappointed that they're not, you know, the lower grades, but I'm grateful that they've got grades six to eight available for some students uh, and the ability for some students to be able to take exams, although they're not quite exactly the same. Uh, Mark Stanky asked me, uh, would you happen to know if the T900 and the T901 are pretty similar in sound? There's so much in one that about 901, but the 900 that they made early mid-90s is pretty elusive to find. Do you know what, Mark? I've never played a T900, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. So uh, I can't help you on there. And a great comment here on the 1975 Mark VI. When I talk about my teachers, Ray Wilkes, like Ray Wilkes, saxophone. Uh, says, found this while researching Mark VI. This guy, NB Muso Man, is originally from the Blackpool area. He used to work briefly at Bill Loonters in the 80s. In the 70s, he used to see Ray and Jimmy Thompson uh, at Rake's Hotel Blackpool Jazz Club. And they were great players. Met Jimmy Thompson a gig in the Northeast years ago in approximately the 1990s. Great to hear those kind of stories. Great to hear that we people are still remembering these amazing musicians and kind of brings me around to the whole thing at the end of today's thing. Please do support musicians in whichever way you can so that we can have stories about this pandemic in the future and a positive thing about how the music kept on playing. And musicians came out of this and we heard some great concerts, some great gigs. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit a like and subscribe if you don't already. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.